Hi, Girl Scouts. It's great to see you and got some familiar people here again. Thanks again for coming to another Inspiring Future. So um, as you know, uh, most of you know, you've already met me through Inspiring Futures, or I've actually met you in person for some of our awesome Girl Scouts events, because I am the program and events manager at Girl Scouts of Colorado. So one of the roles that I have is uh, running Inspiring Futures, where I get to um, search for some inspiring women in different professions um, to bring on to Inspiring Futures so that Girl Scouts can see their possible future selves and learn about uh, different professions and ask questions. And uh, it's pretty interesting to um, just learn about every different profession we've had so far. Um, and we have another one great, another great one lined up for you tonight. So uh, we have a partner with us um, for Inspiring Futures, and that's College Invest. So College Invest is Colorado's savings program, and um, it's a, a company that exists for um, financing higher education. So basically, at College Invest, um, caregivers and parents, grandparents can contribute money into a college savings program, and that money will grow um, tax-free. So by the time you get to graduating high school and want to go on to higher education, uh, you, your money has grown over the years and you can use that money to pay for college anywhere across the country pretty much. Uh, apprenticeship programs have been added, trade, um, trade programs. So, you know, it's really got uh, a lot of um, applications that can be used for the, the savings program. So we have a word from their CEO about what she hopes you will get out of Inspiring Futures today. Hi, I'm Angela Beyer, CEO of College Invest, and welcome to this episode of Inspiring Futures. Through Girl Scouts, you've learned that if you can dream it, you can do it. And here at College Invest, Colorado's Education Savings Program, we help you get there. And you're never too young to begin to imagine your inspired future. So how will you impact this world? Will you run your own business, invent a new technology, or maybe even discover a life-saving cure? But wherever your inspiration takes you, a College of Best Savings Plan can help make your dreams a reality. Now, prepare to be inspired. Great. Well, I'm sure we will get inspired tonight. I guarantee it, actually. Um, so uh, our housekeeping items are that we are recording this uh, so we can put it up on our Inspiring Futures YouTube channel. Um, so we'd love for you to share your uh, video and unmute and interact if you want. I will be editing the video before it goes up onto YouTube. So I will take out any video so it won't be out there in public. Um, so you know that if you are hesitant about sharing because of that purpose. So anyhow, we'd love to see your faces. And next up is our Girl Scout um, Promise and Law. So all my honor, I will try to serve God in my country and help people at all times to live and to live by the Girl Scout law and the Girl Scout law. I'll be honest and fair, friendly and helpful, considerate and caring, courageous and strong, responsible for what I say and do, and to respect myself and others, respect authority, use resources wisely, make the world a better place and be a sister to every Girl Scout. I love it when I had my Daisy troop and they would scream out, uh, be a sister to every Girl Scout and hug each other was pretty cute. So, uh, but you're not here to listen to me chatter on. Um, what we are all here for is to meet pilot Pamela Freeland, and she's here to talk to us about her career path through um, uh, being becoming a pilot for Southwest Airlines. So I'm going to stop yattering, sh stop sharing my screen, and I will introduce Pamela Freeland to everybody. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me all right? Yep, we can. Okay, it's good to see you guys here tonight. I'm just absolutely honored to be able to talk to you a little bit about what it's like to be a professional pilot, both in the military and in the civilian world as a civilian. Um, I appreciate your time and I hope that uh, I can give you some information that would make you uh, think about possibly considering becoming a professional pilot. So without further ado, I will share my little presentation. Um, first off, 
Uh, a little bit about me. I have been uh, a pilot since I was 20 years old. I got my license when I turned 20 years old. And I'm not going to tell you how old I am, but that means I've been a pilot for quite a quite a while. Um, I am a Colorado native. I was born in Colorado, a third generation Colorado native, actually grew up in the South Denver area. Uh, I uh, got all my flight training through the United States Air Force and I served in the Air Force for 20 years. After I retired, I joined Southwest Airlines and I've been there for eight years. And I am married uh, to a wonderful man who's retired Air Force position, and we have a wonderful dog named Baxter, and that's our little family. So uh, why would I be talking to you about becoming a pilot? What's great about being a pilot? Well, there's quite a few benefits, uh, actually. An airline captain in the United States makes about $300,000 per year, which is a very, very good paycheck. Uh, that's roughly equivalent to what a physician or a lawyer will make. Uh, so that gives you a little bit of perspective. An airline captain is very well paid. Uh, we, we don't work nearly as hard as a doctor or as a lawyer, for that matter. We, I generally work only about three days a week. And uh, I have some flexibility in my work. Some weeks I want to work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays. Other times I want to work Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I have some flexibility to fit, fit into my free time all the things that I really, really enjoy doing. And since I'm only working about three days a week, that gives me a lot of options for my the rest of my time. I can get a second job. I could really dive into my hobbies. I could go on a long camping trip. I could meet up with friends and family. So it really gives me a lot of flexibility in managing my work life. Uh, being a pilot, obviously, you're going to travel around, and travel is always pretty much equal, equal to adventure. So you get to travel the world for free, particularly if you're working for an airline uh, or in the military. You'll get to see amazing places and have the free time once you're on the ground there to explore the local area, foods, meet people. And uh, when you're on the job, when you're flying the plane, you've got a pretty nice view. It's a very comfortable seat and uh, you get to see the world from 35,000 feet. It's pretty spectacular. Pilots in our society tend to be fairly well uh, respected. So if you want, if you're thinking about a career where you would get uh, some prestige for your work, uh, being a professional pilot is one of those areas where we enjoy a lot of respect. And quite honestly, flying an airplane is pretty fun. It's like being on a roller coaster, except you're pretty much driving the roller coaster. So you can swoop and, and loop and fly upside down sometimes. And it's, that's all a great amount of fun. So, but one of the biggest reasons why you might wanna consider being a pilot is because the world really needs pilots. Our pilots are retiring pretty fast and we're going to need to replace the ones we have over the next 17 years with about three quarters of a million new pilots around the world. So about half of the pilots that are working now are going to retire in the next 15 years. So you ladies are going to be right in a really great position to be competitive for a job. Uh, as soon as you are eligible to get those jobs um, and the money is great. And you, can, and you can work in many different areas, which I'll get to in a, in a minute. Uh, there's a great demand for air travel. Uh, these days, especially following COVID, people are anxious to travel and see the world in many of the places that people wanna go. You really can't get there by boat or by train or by car. And sometimes you just wanna get there a little bit faster. So there's a lot of people that want to fly by air. And what's relevant for us as women is only about 6% of professional pilots in the world are women, which means that you pretty, st pretty well stand out in the crowd. Uh, so all of this adds up to be great opportunities for ladies in your generation, and as well as the boys that you know, they, they can be pilots too. So where are some of the places that pilots work? Well, obviously you can work in the airlines, flying people to their destinations, to job interviews, to family meetings, to vacation. Uh, you can work also, an, another type of airline is a cargo carrier such as UPS or FedEx. They also fly all those packages that you're ordering off of Amazon. Uh, so that's considered an airline job. 
The United States military has a great need for pilots and they'll give you all of your training. In addition to flying big heavy aircraft in the, in the military, you might have the chance to fly a fighter jet like this young lady is and uh, go do some good in the world. Our media, news outlets, traffic reporting, that's usually helicopter flying, but there's jobs in those areas where you can report on the local area. Uh, com companies, celebrities, famous people like to uh, hire private jets for their transportation. And so you could get a job working in the corporate airline industry. You can do aviation as part of community service. This young lady flies an air ambulance, flies people to hospitals when they need medical care. You could do firefighting. That's something that's been really relevant here in the Colorado area the last several years. You can even fly a helicopter for the police and be a law enforcement officer, eyes in the sky. If you live in a beautiful place like we do in Colorado, the tourists come and maybe they wanna take a plane ride and see this beautiful area from the sky. So tourism aviation is another area where you could work. In the entertainment industry, obviously Hollywood uses airplanes to get those great spectacular movie shots. This woman on this in this picture, she's a professional aerobatic air show pilot. She's pretty awesome if you ever look up uh, she's got quite a few videos on uh, YouTube. It's pretty amazing what she can do. Maybe once you learn how to fly, you want to teach other people how to fly so you can become a flight instructor. And with all those flying skills, you can give back to charity. Uh, you can help rescue people from disasters. You can uh, bring supplies into areas that have been devastated. Or as this woman is doing, fly a shelter pet to where the, where the pet can enjoy their forever home. So there's many areas where you can get a flying job, not just in the airlines. So, okay, being a pilot is cool. So how would you get there? Well, there's two main pathways to becoming a professional pilot. One is as a civilian and one is as a member of the United States military. As a civilian pilot, one of the great things about this pathway is it is self-paced training. You get your flight training at your own pace when you want, where you want. You don't require, uh, there's no college degree required to be a professional pilot, although it is highly desired. It's not a, a requirement. You can work anywhere in the world. There's airlines all over the world and airline or flying jobs all over the world. So if you wanted to see what it's like to live in Papua New Guinea, you could get a flying job down in Papua New Guinea. Uh, you get control, more control over what type of aircraft and what jobs you uh, you want to do. And that's generally the fastest path. The civilian pathway is the fastest way to get to the airlines and to that big money that I talked about at the beginning of this presentation. So in order to go down the civilian pathway, in order to get all the training you need, is going to cost about $80,000. You're going to start with a private pilot's license. You can earn that at age 17. And so you get a driver's license first at 16 and then a private pilot's license at age 17. After that, you can complete your instrument rating so you know how to fly using just instruments. So if you can't see out the window, um, uh, then you'll be able to navigate without being uh, using just the instruments in the cockpit. Uh, following getting your instrument rating, then you can complete your commercial pilot's license and you can get that at age 18. And from that, once you get that license, then you can get paid to fly. At that point, you can get a flying job and start earning money as a pilot. And as I said before, one of those one of the ways you can do that, one of the great entry jobs for new pilots is to be an instructor. So you can complete your flight instructor training and uh, start teaching other people how to fly while you're building up your own hours. Uh, you'll complete a multi-engine rating. That's another set of training so that you can fly an airplane with more than one engine. And then finally, at age 23, then you're old enough to earn an air transport pilot license. And that is the final credential that you would need to get an airline job. So you can see from age 17 to age 23, there's a good amount of time for you to complete the training, to build up your hours and get ready for a career as a professional pilot. But there is that $80,000. How do people pay $80,000 for flight training? Well, just keep in mind that if you wanted to become a doctor, that's going to be about $54,000 per year. 
of medical school. So that's about a quarter of a million dollars to become a doctor, where it's only $80,000 to become a pilot. And in the end, you make the same amount of money. So how would you how would you pay for all of that training? Well, the easiest way, the fastest way is to get a student loan. But keep in mind a student loan, just like with any educational loan, it has to be paid back. But that money is out there. You could get a job at an airport and do work at the airport in exchange for flight instruction, sort of trading your labor for the instruction and the opportunity to build hours. Many of the airlines have set up partnership programs with training schools, aviation schools, in order to grow up the next generation of pilots. And by getting selected for one of those partnership programs, for instance, Southwest has a program called Destination 225, uh, which takes someone who doesn't know anything about flying and brings you all the way up to the point where you can get a job as a Southwest Airlines pilot. Uh, that offsets some of the cost of your training. You still do have some of the bill, but it is an easier way to get there. And then finally, the freest money out there is scholarships. There are many, many organizations out there that offer scholarships for flight training. And here on this slide is a whole list of organizations that you could go to their websites and look to see what, what it takes to qualify for their scholarships, to see what each of these organizations can do to advocate for you uh, as you pursue an aviation career. And you meet other members of the flying community that maybe have a passion for flying through the skies. So you see there's four right there in the middle, Women in Aviation International, the 99s, Female aviation, Aviators Sticking Together and Sisters of the Skies. Those four organizations are geared towards promoting women in flying jobs. So that would be a great place to start. But all of these websites, and there's many others out there, are for organizations that are willing to give you free money to learn how to fly. Free money. Free money. So now you've got your money lined up. Uh, where would you go to learn how to fly as a civilian? Well, you could go to your local airport. There's many, many small airports around Colorado. Most of them have a flying club. Some of them simply have flight instructors that are looking for students. So you either join a flying club and get started on a training program, or you hire a flight instructor who will put together a plan of instruction for you and get you on your way to getting your first license. Another way to do it, if you are considering going to college, is to go to a college that offers an aviation degree. That way you get your college degree and all of your flight training certificates at the same time. So that's a two for the price of one kind of deal. Again, you could get selected for one of these airline partnerships. Another one uh, besides Southwest uh, Destination 225 is called United, United Elevate. That's for United Airlines. But each of the major airlines is putting together one of these partnership programs. So look at the airline. Maybe, maybe you have a particular airline that you think you'd like to fly for and look at their website and you, you'll be able to find information on their partnership program. And then finally, if you just want to get as much training done in the shortest amount of time, you could head on to a flight school and go through one of their aviation boot camps. And that's pretty much all flying all day for about a year. Uh, it's intensive, it's expensive, but it is quick. It is a quick way to do it. So that's the civilian pathway. Well, let's say you don't have $80,000. And so you say, well, maybe I'll join the military. They'll train me for free. Well, the great thing about a military pathway is that you have a guaranteed flying job for 10 years, at least 10 years. Uh, they give you all your flight training for free. Every, every bit of training that you would need for an airline job, you can get from the military. While you're working in the military, while you're serving, you can travel the world and you get paid extra to do it. You get paid extra money to go all over the world. Uh, they say you wear pajamas to work, but that's pretty much what a flight suit feels like when you're flying in the military is you feel like you're wearing your pajamas. They're extremely comfortable. So if you're like me, you don't really like wearing a suit or a skirt or hose or high, high heels, maybe a flight suit and combat boots is more your speed. And probably the best reason for going into the military is you're really part of a team. You're making a difference all around the world for people who are in very dire straits. And you get to make some amazing friends along the way. So how do you do the military pathway? Well, it doesn't cost you anything out of pocket, but there is still a cost. In order to become a military aviator, you have to have a college degree. You have to get a commission as an officer. 
So that's either going to one of the service academies like the US Air Force Academy down in Colorado Springs, uh, West Point, Annapolis, one of the academies uh, that gets you your college degree as well as your commission in the military as an officer. Or you can go through officers training school, which is about six to eight weeks of intensive officer training. Again, in order to enter into that, you have to have a college degree, or you can do as I do and go to college, but join an, a reserve officers training corps, which is ROTC. And that is a way for you to, uh, that's a, an additional elective while you're at college to learn about the military and to learn how the military works to prepare for that portion of your career. So once you have your college degree and you have a commission as an officer, you get selected for a pilot assignment and then you are on your way. Military flight training is one year. It's 52 straight weeks, all flying, all the time. You're doing aerobatics, you're doing fast, you're doing instruments, you're doing low level. It's really, really a great time. Uh, and then after that, you serve eight to 10 years, depending on which uh, military service you join. Uh, and that gets you all the hours and all the training that you need to be competitive for uh, any flying job once, you, once you're done with the military. So you're not in college yet. You're not quite there. What can you be doing now as a middle school, as high school, getting ready to, just to sample what being a pilot might be like? Civil Air Patrol is an organization that serves our community with search and rescue services. They provide emergency services, disaster relief. And as part of their mission, they have a cadet program. So you can go to this website. This is the Colorado Civil Air Patrol website and look at their cadet program, the Youth Aviation Initiative. What that does is that allows you as a young person to come into the aircraft and help the Civil Air Patrol pilots find lost hikers or bring in supplies and you're learning about flying as well as helping your community. So that's a great way to get uh, your foot in the pool, so to speak. Uh, AOPA, Airplane Operators and Pilots Association, has two programs you might be interested. The Aviators is sort of like a club, uh, sort of like Girl Scouts, where you uh, meet other young people who are interested in aviation, you share information, and, and uh, you attend events such as touring uh, Denver International Airport or uh, getting married up with uh, or getting paired up with an instructor to learn how to fly. And then AOPA also has a high school curriculum that could be offered at your school so that you can learn things like how airplanes are built and learn more about meteorology so that you can gain a greater understanding of the aviation industry. Now, here is an event that you could take part of next month. So this is on June 11th. Uh, one of the women's pilots organizations, the, the local Colorado chapter here is, produce, is putting on a Let's Fly Now event. This is a free airplane flight. This is not you going up for a ride. This is you sitting in the cockpit, flying the plane, turning the plane, taking off and landing. This is getting you a chance to fly an airplane for any girl or a boy age 14 and up. So if you're 14 years old or older, then you're eligible to participate in this. And again, it's free. So if you're avail available on June 11th in the morning and can get out to the Longmont, Colorado Vance Brand Airport, the address is right there. And the point of contact for this event is Audrey Grace, and that's her email. So if you're interested in taking a free flight next month, see if you like being a pilot, send her an email and she'll be able to send you all the information to participate. So in summary, a pilot's career is a lifetime of adventure. If you want to have a job where you never feel like you're going to work because you're having so much fun, then maybe being a pilot is for you. We get excellent pay. We have great travel advent adventures. We have the prestige of our community. You can blaze a trail, be part of a team, and know that your work is in high demand, that you'll always have a job waiting for you. Uh, and remember, a mile of highway will take you one mile, but one mile of runway will take you anywhere in the world. So that is my presentation for you, and I would love to hear if anybody has any questions on being a pilot or flying in general, or the military or civilian. Oh, that's awesome. Actually, Daphne was asking if you could go back to the previous page. Yes. Let's see. This page. 
about the um yeah long lot about the free flight yeah write down yeah. her email tell her that you got the information from the girl scouts inspiring futures presentation and uh you can tell her that you got it from that I, that it was Pamela Freeland, and I am a member of the Colorado chapter of the 99s. That's pretty We'd amazing. love to see you out there. Yeah. And boys, too. And boys, too. You know, just because this is the Girl Scouts and the 99s is a women pilots organization doesn't mean that this event is not open to boys as well. So if you have brothers or if you have friends that are boys interested in flying, then this is an event for, for them as well. Awesome. Daphne also had a question about um, helicopters. Okay. So, um, do when people are trained, to, do you, you know, flying airplanes, flying helicopters, do you, is it the same kind of thing or is yes. it completely different and you need different expertise? Yes. No, well, it is, they're different skills. They're different, definitely different skills, but the pathway is pretty much the same. So, instead of getting a private pilot's license, you would get a helicopter pilot's license. So that you could do that just as the beginning. And you could do all of that other training that I talked about in a helicopter. So you would just have on your license that it would be rotor craft instead of fixed wing. Oh, interesting. So, but if you wanted to transition from helicopters to a regular, they call it fixed wing, where the wing is rigid and you, you have like a central engine on the cone, uh, right then uh, then you would just have to get what they you would go find an instructor you would rent the plane and you'd say i want to get checked out in single engine or in a fixed wing and right. so they would give you whatever training you needed in order to safely fly a fixed wing aircraft so but it is a little bit of different skills mm -hmm. and i honestly i've never flown i've never operated a helicopter i have flown in helicopters but i have never operated one Goal. But that's on my list. It's a goal for you for your free time. <laughs> yes, it's a goal for mine. <laughs> um, another question we had from Athena is, is Western Michigan University still a big pilot school? Yes, yes. And all the pilot colleges, like there's one right here in Denver, Metro, uh, Metro State College, Metro State University here in Denver has a great aviation program. But yeah, Michigan has a great uh, aviation program out there and they they also are constantly in communication with not just the airlines, but other industries that employ pilots in order to get their graduates placed into jobs as quickly as possible for the best pay. Yeah, that's very interesting. Um, are there specific aviation jobs that you get to work with animals and flying vehicles? and flying vehicles. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I saw you mentioned the shelter pet one. Oh, yes. So oh, oh, like putting vehicles on an airplane, not actual vehicles flying. I'm guessing oh. that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, any of the cargo aircraft like UPS and FedEx, they would do transporting of vehicles. They transport everything. In fact, the US military once transported a killer whale. Oh my gosh. So, yes. There you go. Um, anything that can be moved can be moved by an airplane. There is uh, uh, one of the biggest AV, once one of the biggest airplane makers in the world is Boeing. And they have an aircraft that actually can fly other aircraft. They can put oh, wow. other aircraft inside of it and move it around. So that is a massively huge yeah. airplane. That is huge. It's like flying an office building. Right. It is very, very big. And so you need special skills. You know, a couple of the jobs that I didn't mention, one is uh, being a test pilot. So you could actually work for an aerospace engineering company and do testing on new aircraft designs. So that is pretty neat if you're really more into the mechanics and the, and the engineering side of, of flying. And then you also asked about transporting animals. So again, a cargo, uh, a cargo airline would be in the business of transporting animals. If you're, if you're interested in transporting like somebody's pets, some airlines will transport pets in the, in, the, in the baggage area where all of our luggage goes. Southwest doesn't put any animals in the cargo hold. The only animals we can fly are service animals or pets that can fit under the seat in front of you, in a little, little pet carrier. Um, 
But there is also organizations that need pilots, either volunteer pilots or um, employ like pilots to work as a job in the with the mission of moving animals to where they need to go. So uh, the one that the one that I showed you the picture of the the uh, Airbus pilot, the the airline captain with the puppy, uh, she is actually volunteering with an organization called Pilots for Paws. And they they get word from shelters when an animal has been selected for adoption online and they will fly out to wherever the shelter is, pick up the pet and bring it to wherever their forever home is. So that's a great way to keep puppies from getting killed in shelters. I mean, that's a wonderful way to save our animals. That does sound very good. Um, <laughs> Daphne said her concern about the animal shelter one is that like, basically that 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 dog might just come home with her rather than getting to the actual destination. <laughs> I'm sure that has happened many times before. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Okay, Daphne was asking about the flying police. Like so military fly. So there's some people who fly to police the air Mm -hmm. Ace, I guess. Yes. And is there military that do, does that? Is that the military does that? Yeah. Uh, yes, the military does that uh, with a lot of different types of aircraft. We have uh, some aircraft that fly super high in the air and they use electronic means to s do what they call surveilling uh, what's going on in the ground, surveillance on the ground. That's sort of a, you might hear that with the FBI. The FBI does surveillance. But they're just watching and they're listening and they're recording and they're trying to get information on what's going on on the ground. At lower altitudes, you might have helicopters that are actually filming with cameras. They're seeing with their eyes. Um, they, they're protecting people on the ground or they're um, retrieving people from the ground. For, so let's say, let's say a hurricane comes in and an entire area is flooded and there are people up on the roofs of their houses because they because everything's flooded around them. How do they get off their houses without jumping in a canoe? Right. Uh, it, it would be a helicopter. So it's either the local police would um, or air ambulance would come in and rescue them. The U.S. Coast Guard does a lot of that kind of rescue, uh, mm -hmm. as well as um, there. There's actually. Uh, some technology that's moving into using drones to pick things up. So it's not just delivering your Amazon packages. They're looking at larger drones that would be able to drop in. You climb into a basket and the drone flies you away. So the drone doesn't fly by itself. It still needs a pilot flying it. Right. The pilot is working from the ground, piloting the drone remotely. So that is definitely a new technology that's coming into the aviation industry that will still require pilots. You'll still need to know about air currents and the machines and the flight rules and all those things that rec that you need to know to actually be in the plane to fly it. You'll need to know all of that to fly a plane remotely. Right. Oh, that's fascinating. I hope that uh, answers the question. Yeah, the, the different trajectories for the future of aviation. <laughs> yes. yes, and they are talking about having passenger aircraft uh, be pilotless, so be remotely Ooh. piloted. But I really think that that technology isn't going to come along. At least it's not going to be widely used in aviation transportation for probably a good 40 years still. Right. So right. you'll see that in the cargo aircraft first, I think. And then, and then we may right. get to the point where we have passenger aircraft line. Right. Flown remotely, but I, yeah. I personally, if I'm a passenger in a plane, I want to know there's a pilot up front. Yeah, <laughs> definitely comfort. Riding along with me. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody else have any more questions? Trying to look through to see if there's ones I missed. I think I got them mostly. So if if any of you have any interest in flying, now is the time to start looking into it. As, as a teenager, I was looking into flying as a teenager and asking questions and figuring out what path I needed to follow so that when I was at the right age, I was ready to go. So take 
take the opportunities that you have as young people in school to take care, take advantage of these programs like this free flight, to look at the websites and see about other events that may be happening in your area that have something to do with flying. You might be interested more in building aircraft than flying aircraft, but as if you if you expose yourself a little bit to the aviation industry as a young person, you're going to make better choices for your career ahead uh, when you're really starting to put your money into the training. But I can tell you that the best job out there is one where you never feel like you're going to work. Mm -hmm. They say if you do something that you love, you will never work a day in your life. Right. And I feel that way when I when I actually go to fly an airplane, I feel like I'm actually going to have some fun. That's right. that's fun for me. Yeah. So I, I hope that you guys uh, think about a future in aviation. Talk to your friends, even if you think you want to do something else. You know, maybe you're fr you know somebody who's interested in flying. Like I said, we need pilots and we need lady pilots mm -hmm. in particular. So so consider Spread it the word. <laughs> the word and even if you choose not choose to do it for fun i hope that you try it out and i hope that you have a great amount of fun flying above the ground yeah amazing amazing um caitlin has a question about what breed baxter is and if, oh. <laughs> if he's a rescue dog he's a border collie oh. so he is he's white and black uh and he's about 50 pounds so he's pretty big but he uh he loves was playing with the ball. That's his favorite thing in the whole wide world. And he thinks his job is to keep the ball moving at all times. Yes. Or the Frisbee. I have an Aussie Shepherd and it's the same thing. <laughs> yeah. We love our puppies. Yeah. Yep. And they <laughs> like to play ball all yes. the time. Yeah. So awesome. All right. Well, um, thank you, Girl Scouts, for coming. And unless anybody has another question, um, Hoping that uh, maybe we'll see you up in the sky in the future yeah. and I'll be like, hey, I know you, you are a Girl Scout. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Always say hi to your pilots. We're lonely up at the front. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Next time you take a flight, um, especially if you see a female flying the plane, uh, make sure that you say hello and thank her for doing that because she will be inspiring other girls to um do the same as her and, and uh, get up in the sky, transporting animals, cargo people. That's it. Yeah. Putting out fires. <laughs> yeah. Saving the world. <laughs> oh, uh, Caitlin said that uh, she saw a video where border collies would scare the birds off the uh, runways to help oh, yeah. pilots. Oh, yeah. Can you believe that? They actually heard the birds away from the airplanes. That's funny. <laughs> Dogs are so smart. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Kate. All right. Well, thank you so much, Pamela. This is absolutely awesome. And um, girls, if you want to unmute, you can say thank you and goodbye. Thanks. Bye. Mm -hmm. Have a great afternoon. All right. Have a great night, everybody. Thanks again, Pamela. Bye. Thanks Bye. for the opportunity.